welcome back guys if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe and hit the notification button so you can keep getting cool content like this in the future and if you do not want to subscribe at least just like or comment on this tutorial so the algorithm can kind of push this to those who actually need them all right so let's let's get to it so i've done is a completed 1k render for this after making a few settings we did previously and i think so far we can, we can work with this we can live with this yeah the painting the face painting might not be the best but i think this should work for now so let's go on to creating the texture in the hair so i need to, I need to bring them out Let's bring, this, bring them out. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh. Huh. Let's start with the head here for now. Somewhere around here. So. How do you go about texturing the head gen here? So I would go to head gen first. So on the head scalp, let's start from the eye scalp, our eye scalp collection instead. This is the eyelashes. So let's go to preview. Render, let's set this to Arnold. Okay. Uh, okay, that, that's just basically. I think this should be on ribbon. Ribbon should be fine. That should be fine. Come to the eyebrow. Let's set this to. I think I need. Open egg PRF for this. So for let me put this here like so. So I have a few, I have a few ideas in mind. I have a few ideas in mind. So that I'm going to be experimenting with. But first, let's start with the default. Let's start with what. Let's start with what um Engine gives us the default settings for this. So then later we can work our way to true customizing it a bit more so so let's say this to another vendor then let's go to the add, 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 add collection so another render for the beard and for the mustache another render for the top air stop is quite a bit large okay and not render all right okay so now how do we texture this how do we shade this rather let me get close up on the head like so so i will go to the head air collection to the top head air collection and in description rather i'll select it make sure it's selected then let me zoom in right click on old assign new material anode ai standard ai standard surface like this oh crap that's the wrong one wrong one no wrong one wrong one wrong one Material and not standard here, very important. And not standard here. So if you change to black, yes, you change black now. Okay, so I'm just going to come here and rename this to AI Top Head Hair. 
ओके सेव दिस सेलेक्ट दिस अगेन सो आई थिंक यू शुड हैव डू आई हैव इट हियर ओके आई नीड टू ब्रिंग आउट द ए अनोड इट बिंग आउट माय प्योर फॉर एक्स जेन है बट इन द आई हैव सो ए फ्यू रेंडर सेटिंग्स I have a few render settings in here. Okay. So, uh, let's. Think I can show you guys the documentation for this. So if you use the Arnold documentation for, I'm beginning to it in details in this in this actually I don't want to go in details in this. You can always check the documentation for Arnold here. So ideally, this is mainly that kind of controls at least a variety of natural air colors in here. So at the value of At the value of um, zero, the value of zero, we have the value of zero. We have something towards the white here. Yeah, this is for the melanin, for the melanin, for the white. Then at the value of zero point two five, we have something in between blonde hair, yeah, something like so. So only for let me just read this out. The melanin parameters is used to generate natural hair colors by controlling the amount of melanin in the hair. Colors will range from blonde around 2.0 to red, and brown around 0.5 to black at one. So values in between kind of give you different variations of hair in there. So that is general. That is generally it. Okay. They have the melanin redness controls the redness of the air. Higher values increase the proportion of red fuel melanin as found in red hair relative to the amount of brown in the melanin. Right. So if you compare this now, see this as zero. See this as zero. Then see it at a value of four or at one. Okay. So then we have the melanin randomized, randomized, randomized the amount of melanin in hair fibers for variation in hair color. So you can see this at default now. Then at a value of 0.5, you can see more white hair speaking through. So we're going to be using, actually using this. We're going to be using this. Probably will increase all the way to the eye because for some, to some extent you can see you can see some variations of white hair in there. So I have a variation of this is actually start, starting from a black hair, which with a little, very little amount of melanin. So we're looking at setting this at a value of not completely one though. I'm using one entirely. Why? Because it says in your documentation that brown around 0.5 to black around one. So we, so in between a value of 0.5 to one, should be having something with a mixture of Black to brown. So, trying something around, let's say, zero point seven or zero point eight should be the value we should be looking for in here. Then we would we won't be adding too much redness in there. So I think we want to be sticking with the default value, which is as because the default value is at zero point five. Maybe we might maybe we might leave the default value at zero point five, or maybe. Bring it down to zero point three thereabouts. Then the randomizer will be taking this all the way, all the way, maybe not all the way up entirely, but probably try something around zero point now so to zero point zero point eight to zero point nine thereabouts. So let's just plug that in. So I have where is it? I think I have okay. So say this one has some variation of white hairs in there. It's one of the renders I did. This is this is the value for it. So we have something around maybe around zero point two. Zero point two is somewhere around blonde. Somewhere around blonde. So in between in between this, in between that, then 
plane of redness of 0 0.8 okay you can add more redness in there then merely randomizer 0 0.75 so 0 0.75 you can see some white hairs picking out picking through it now okay ideally so let's let's with that in mind let's just plug in begin to plug in the values in there so let's start with in between brown to black hair so i'm going to try something around 0 0.5 I'm using full black. Oh, I'm using full black. I'm, I'm actually looking at staying at this color. Okay, let's do 0 0.75. Okay. It's kind of giving us an ideal, an ideal preview in there though. Which is kind of cool. Okay, we put this to Put this to 9 0 0.9 you can see how the air gets that kind of, kind of nice it's nice that we can actually see some amount of preview in here so let's try value of it let's see what we have okay okay something like this melanin redness we take this down let me take this up. Let's see if, if it actually show. Okay, it actually show us something in there. Just a little redness somewhere around here. Let's put this 0.5. I don't know if you guys can actually see it though. Maybe I should zoom in a bit more. Like so. You can actually see it properly. I see it has more redness to it. Same with the black, so you put this all the way to black. Okay. There wasn't a value of 0 0.8. <clears throat> then this was setting this to 0 0.1. 0 0.15 rather. Let's say 0.15. Let's round up the number. Randomize, I'm not sure if we might actually see much of this happening in here though. I doubt. Can't really see much difference in there. Can't see more. Let me crank this all the way up. Let's see. Crank the width all the way up. Let's see. For the roughness, for the roughness, I'm not totally sure if. Okay. The roughness just. Hmm. Um, think I would increase the roughness for this. What's the default value in there? Zero point two. 0.2 let's get a dollar rougher air in the like some kind of as if it kind of death is on the hair so let's increase it to 0 0.5 this is 0 0.5 i don't think if we need any anisotropic rough roughness in there so but once you need to adjust in here will be this shift not the shift entire okay shift where the shift these are values for the shift. So the angle of scales on the air fiber shifting the primary and secondary specular reflections away from the perfect mirror direction. Yeah, there's a lot of technical explanations. Basically, we have a chart in here that we can, we can just use. So for Japanese and Chinese, so Chinese here, uh, let's put this, let's get a more, let's get more of Chinese settings in there. So for the shifts, Chinese 3.6. 0.6 right okay so that's pretty much it so let's do a quick render for this let's see if we let's see if we capture the essence of this a bit more okay so save this okay And if we save it again, okay. Uh, I think okay. Our main light source is coming from this direction, so that's why we kind of tilted it 
towards where our sunlight will be coming from. We also have a rim light at the back that will kind of illuminate the back of the hairs a bit more. So let's get a render out. Let's see what we have. Save this. Fire up and This might take a little while. Okay. I believe we should be getting something interesting in here. So now it just depends on now. I might need to for the edge one. I need to go back and forth for the thickness of the air just to get something right in there. Well, let's hold up a minute and then allow this run through. Let's allow this run through. But hmm. well, right off the bat, I can see some white everything through this. So right there is looking through already. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's actually coming out. Seems to be coming out quite well. Okay. Right, I think. Let me use the one. Let me check the image that is not really saturated. Okay. It's kind of pushed towards the black, a bit of a bit of blackness in the a bit darker. A bit darker. So we might need to add some might need to make this even darker than it is right now. So let's let's render. Stop this render. Let's add some darkness in there. So um we just need to crank this up. Let's use nine. Let's use a value of nine. Well, let's this snapshot of this just for you, just to get this as reference. It's a reference in there. So let's this again. Let's see what we have. Maybe we should just isolate a particular region so we can get our start back in here. So let's just isolate this region. So keeping keeping that keeping account of or rather keeping in mind that the HRI like HRI we have the HRI image we have around this is from an exterior environment. So we are having that yellow which nature from the from the sun. I wonder you lose nature of the reddish color from the sun or temperature from the sun bouncing on this so that will kind of give us a bit more yellowishness to the hair. Also, probably that will affect how we add more blackness to the hair. That will definitely affect how we add more blackness to the hair. So when the light is reflecting or shining on it, it will kind of dissipate the air follicles and then give us a, a like quality, this not this first like quality dissipated tone of black, but maybe not completely showing full black or more like more like more or less like a gray kind of shade to it. But you can see the details in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if you guys can actually see that, but I can actually see some bit in there. And the randomizer the actually helping us a lot, kind of add some very of detail in there, like some old, old looking in there. But I still feel I feel like to make this a bit darker than it is right now. So let's just go all the way down. 
a snapshot. Okay, good. I was able to do a snapshot of that before the render went off. So no more blackness to the air. And that's in and how thing is that. I'm adding more blackness to the air. This randomizer is actually taking away some of the images. Randomizer is actually breaking up the air that very much because it's not, it's not a very high, it's not a very high value for the randomizer. So it's not really sticking very much to the original tone of the air melanin. It's kind of breaking it up even more. Breaking it up even more, adding a lot of variation in there, which I want, but I feel I should take this down a notch. Maybe put this at zero point. I think zero point five would be might be a good one. So I might actually need to might actually need to so setting that to zero point five now. It's actually <clears throat> actually elevates the blackness coming from the melanin coming from the melanin we set at one. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. I believe that makes sense. Though you can actually leave this as it is if you want to. You can actually leave it as it is if you want to, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if I want to. But just for the sake of experimenting. So just for the sake of experimenting, I'll do another, I'll do another snapshot of this. And I'll set this to 5. 0.5. So you can, you can now you can instinctively see that the air becomes way darker. Because we can see the blackness from the end now. From these values, the value we actually used in there is 0.1, the 1 rather. So that's just one way to kind of, that's one way to kind of break things up. So you, you, you know that value kind of attributes or contributes a specific color tone to it. It's kind of break the surface or the texture of your of your hair. Now it feels nice, it feels too uniform. It just feels way too uniform. So I'm thinking of since we have this added value now, I'm looking too uniform. I can't really see that distinctive crop in there. Because now, now it's just looking like we can't really see the in the individualistic nature of each part last strand properly because I mean of a flooded black black to it so so uh, i'm not going to find a balance for this that something would work i like how the skin can see something in the hand so i'm just going to so i'm thinking of thinking of uh think this to 0 0.9 0 0.9 then set this randomizer to 0 point, 0 0.8 so let's see what we have see, see what we have in there So it gives you that individualistic properties to it. Okay. All right. Let me look at this from a distance because I'm not going to get a, an overview from looking at this from a distance, kind of get an idea. Let's change this to this is, let's see. Well, that kind of darkens everything out. Gamma 1.8. Think we are at a good place. You can see how this also affects the nature of the air, also. Alright, good place. Let's view our reference again. Yeah, you can definitely see some white hairs among this. Okay.
think I can leave with this. Okay. This I can definitely leave with square back to SRGB gamma. Yeah, I think it should be fine. It should be fine for now. We can't really see the white as in there that much. So let me take this one last thing I would like to do. Let's say increase this all the way up. Set it to set this to one. Then I'll compare. Just the comparison. Now, if you're making this blonde, blondes are more expensive to render. Blondes are really expensive to render, but any other color apart from blonde or white, uh, you can get decent results in there. You can really get decent results in there. Okay. It's looking interesting. Right. Some of this we can work with because this to gamma one point so you can get a more darker fit. Darker fit. We see okay. We don't need to we don't might not need to adjust this. This just give us a darker tone to it. Or when it is it's just too dark. Is it too dark? So this you can always adjust later on in <clears throat> on part. But I think this should work just fine. This should work just fine. In the next lesson, we're going to experiment with this. Thinking of thinking of adding variations of actual chunks or clumps of white air around it a bit more. A bit more around it, and I'm going to be trying the layer, the AI layer, layer shader. To kind of see if we can, we can actually break this up and add some chunks of white air around it. Make it feel a bit more interesting. Okay, so I'm going to take a full render of this and I'll come back when I'm done. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next lesson. Bye for now. Let's get an upshot of this. Yes, I did. Let's do a more broader render for this. Let's see what we have.